Good morning and welcome to New Thought Talk. I am the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in beautiful downtown Madera, right across the street from the post office. If you get a chance, come out and see us on Sunday. So today's show, I've decided I'm going to share with you uh, some of my thoughts about making decisions in our lives and uh, accepting something better than average because so often so many of us seem to accept average as just what it is that we do. I believe it was Emerson that said something to the effect that once we make a decision the universe uh, moves to respond to that and it was better better phrased and better stated by a fellow by the name of Goethe. I'm going to read what he said because it's a little extensive but it's right on the money. He says, until one is committed there is a hesitancy, there is a chance to draw back. Concerning all acts of the initiative, there is one elementary truth, that ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. That the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues just from that decision. Raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamed would have come his way. Whatever you can do or dream that you can do, you can do. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it begin now. And he also said, to think is easy, to act is hard, but the hardest thing in the world is to act in accordance with your thinking. I sat with a young man a day or two ago, and he was sharing with me um, a little bit of a conundrum that he's experiencing right now. He's got a, a steady job, he's got a family, and he's thinking about leaving that job and going to work for someone else where in the short term he stands to make a substantial amount of money and the increase in his salary but in the long term the possibility is that the job may not be there when when uh, the seasons change because this type of work is a seasonal work and so as we sat and we talked and I, I had a chance to reflect back on our day-to-day -day lives, what we, what we accept for ourselves. And in sharing with this young man, I, I reminded him that although right now it looks good to have that extra paycheck at the end of the week, um, later on when the job's not there, it, things are going to get a little tight and you gotta, you got to think about what's going on down the line. So often we accept what is average in our lives because, let's face it, average is what we were not taught to accept. You know, you think back to the days when you were in school, for most people, if you got a C, you were doing just fine. You know, we all knew A and B students. We knew the, 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 the kids that uh, they got the, you know, the varsity letters or, you know, they, they participated in all this stuff, but they were the exception. They weren't the rule. Most everybody was looking to get by, to get that C or better, move on, uh, maybe move on to a, a college and uh, we'll accept a, a junior college. And that, not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with junior colleges, but it's the fact that we, we choose to just accept instead of choosing to excel, to make a decision, to make a choice. And that's what I want to talk to you about today is making a choice to be above and beyond average. My goodness, average is just we get up in the morning and we go through our day. Average is living out of habit. 
average is just accepting that whatever is on the evening news is whatever we're going to experience in our life. Average is having that relationship with the person that we, we claim to love and just accepting the day and not experiencing or becoming involved in life. You know, life is meant to be lived, not to be, not to be just set through. And yet so many of us just sit through lives. The television has been a great boon to the spread of our national rear end, so to speak. Um, but it's not just the TV. It's, you know, it's not just the computer, which the younger generations are involved with now. It's, it seems pervasive in so much more of our lives. But imagine, imagine that at some point that there was and there is a creative there is a creative source in the universe that we call first cause, or we call it God, or we call it spirit. And imagine that in order to express itself, it created this magnificent creation that we call the universe, that we call our solar system, that we call our earth, that we call our individual lives. Imagine that all of this was done by this infinite loving being that we call God. And we have to say, if we imagine that, for what purpose do we, do we see this creation take place? Why? In other words, the, the, the question arises, why are we here? We're here, I believe, and I share and I teach, that we are here to express our lives in, in the magnificence of all that they are. I mean, think about it. Think about, there is, science today is working very hard to, to create these massive computers, and they're, they're talking about at some point in time creating a computer that will equal the brain. Do you know, just for example, between the time that you take a breath in and you exhale that breath, that some half a billion impulses take place in your brain in that short period of time? Imagine that. What is that? What, what is that all about? This brain is such a magnificent tool, and yet... We don't think much about it, but it's a tool that we can use, you know, but you got to, you have to understand a couple of things to begin with. First off, we're not our brains. Our brains are our tool that our creator gifted to us, that we may take and use the trueness of who we are with this tool to create an incredible life. Using this tool is like any other skill that we, we try to uh, learn in our life experience. There are people that, uh, that uh, excel in sports, and they don't excel in sports because they just do. I mean, there are people with natural abilities and, and natural skills, but they'll never get above average if they don't practice those skills, if they don't put in the time, if they don't work to hone and, and refine and to, to get the reflexes and get the muscles to, to do exactly what they need to do in, in that particular uh, skill. It's the same way with our brain. Our brain is a tool that we can use, but it is a tool like our, our musculoskeletal system that must be trained and and exercised. And we exercise it through reading. We exercise it through meditation. We exercise it through living life abundantly. Um, we begin to allow it to get a little flabby when we just sit and we let the world entertain it and let the world provide for it. And so my personal belief is today in our country, and throughout a good part of the world, we're experiencing what we might call mental or brain flab. We are lazy in, in our thinking. We are lazy in our life experience, and our life expression feeds that back to us. And we, we get this way because we look at life and we say, average is okay. You know, if I can get up in the morning and I can go to my work and I can come home at the end of the day and I have my 2.5 kids at home and my wife or my 2.5 kids at home and my husband, whatever the case may be, that everything is just fine. But you're not experiencing life as it was meant to be lived. You're experiencing life just as an average. So when I was talking to this young man, and I was sharing with him some of these thoughts about being average and just accepting. I got to thinking about what does it take? 
what do we need to do? What do we need to, to, to put into this wonderful tool that we call our brain to, to elevate ourselves above and beyond average? And, and the first thing is something that we call self-discipline. Self-discipline is a powerful tool that there is probably not a, a successful individual in the world that doesn't utilize this. Whether they utilize it consciously or unconsciously doesn't make any difference. But the ability to, to direct your mind, to focus it in a particular way, and then to stay on track, to commit to that, and to follow through is uh, what we call self-discipline. When we do that, amazing things happen. Um, when I was a young man, I was told that, uh, I believe at about a 19, if you were 18 or 19 years old, and you put $10 a week in the bank, every week, and you allowed it to maintain uh, a compounding of interest, that by the time you were 40 years old, and I don't remember the specifics, but you'd have an incredible amount of money in the bank. You could actually retire somewhere around age 40. And uh, the idea of that, it just seems so incredibly simple. I mean, you just put money in the bank a little bit. Who's going to miss, you know, whether it was $10 a week or $100 a month, who's going to miss that when we're, when we're making our, our income of, you know, $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 a week or a month? We're not, we're not, we don't miss that. We put it in, and, and it's no big thing. And then some 40, you know, 20-some years later when we're 40, 45, all of a sudden we've got this huge amount of money sitting in the bank waiting for us to create our rest of our lives with an abundance. And I, and I used to think, well, how, how simplistic that is. Simple does not necessarily mean it's to be avoided. Simple sometimes is, the, is God's way of giving us a path to the most direct way of experiencing a life of abundance. And that's basically what this was, is an idea that we could take and we put a little bit away. It's the self-discipline of doing it every week. We do it and we continue to do it and all of a sudden at some point, wow, we've got this end result. Well, it's the same way with, with developing habits of um, getting things done, developing all the, the goodness that we need, want, desire to have in our lives, doing it on a consistent basis, doing it through what we call self-discipline is an incredible, easy, step-by-step -step way. Um, one of the things, I used to be in sales many years ago, and one of the things that they talk about, that about 40%, 48% of most salesmen make a single call to a potential client. If the client doesn't accept the sales pitch at that point in time, they hang up. They take them off the list. They don't bother to call back. There's about 20% that'll call a second time. There's about another 10% that will call a third time. But you get down, there's about 7% that will call about five times. That 7% of the sales force in the entire country lives at a level of uh, abundance that is at the highest level that you can imagine. And it's only because they make four more phone calls. They're just a little more self-disciplined, a little more persistent, and they just keep it up. So I'm getting the notice. It's time to go to our first break. I will see you when we come back. We'll talk more about self-discipline and being above average. This segment has been brought to you by Horn Photo in the Bellagio at River Park. For all of your photo and camera needs, go to Horn Photo in the Bellagio at River Park. Family photos tell your stories. Faces, places, milestones, and moments. You probably meant to preserve those memories, but where are those pictures now? Hiding in boxes or inside the discoloring pages of old albums? Do you own hours of home movies and videotapes that you can't even watch? Slides and negatives that you've saved for all these years and never get to see? Think of all those precious memories that you've saved from the past to share with the future. Thanks to technology, we're taking more photos than ever, but we're not printing them like we should. Those digital images are held hostage on phones, tablets, and hard drives, leaving them as high-risk targets for accidents and hardware failure. What will happen to all of these images that tell your life story? Cherish those captured memories, not by hiding them, but by safely saving them. 
put this overwhelming task on your own agenda or enlist Horn Photo's expertise. Horn Photo provides hands-on help from day one with organizing, scanning, restoring, and duplicating photographs. We can digitize your print and video memories onto DVD for easy viewing and safe, efficient storage. All you need to do is gather your prints, slides, negatives, and videos, then bring them into Horn Photo, where we will care for your cherished memories. In most cases, you can pick up your originals and your DVD within a few days. Once everything is on DVD, it's easy and affordable to order copies of your DVD for your children, siblings, and the rest of your family, so that you can share your memories with everyone. The best part is what can happen once your memories are digitized. We will show you how to transform your pictures into keepsake photo gifts and products you can enjoy for years to come. Don't wait for a disaster to destroy your collection of memories. Take steps to sort, save, and share your life in photos, whether you do it yourself or have Horn Photo help. Stop into Horn Photo and see our full range of solutions for saving and sharing your precious memories. You can advertise your business, your product, or your event on Central Valley Talk, the Valley's only internet television station. Several of our programs are also picked up on DISH and cable networks. For the best advertising dollar, call Central Valley Talk at 579-1360. CentralValleyTalk.com Well, welcome back to the second segment of our show, New Thought Talk. I am the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in beautiful downtown Madeira, and I am glad to be here today. I hope you're happy to be with us. Stick around. we got some more good stuff coming. I want to read something to you, and this is out of the Science of Mind book, and it says, The mind of man is some part of the mind of God. Therefore, it contains within itself unlimited possibility of expansion and self-expression. The conscious mind of man is self-knowing, self-assertive. It has volition, will, choice, and may accept or reject. It is the only part of man's mind which can think independently of conditions. The subconscious mind of man is simply the law of mind in action. It's not a thing of itself, but it is the medium for all thought action. It is the medium by which man may call into temporary being whatever he needs or enjoys on a pathway of his experience. So to take that and wrap that into what I was talking about being above average and self-discipline, imagine that just for instance, for right now, that that there is this creative being that we call God, and that way we can we can take into our conversation this morning, those people that aren't sure whether there's something that we call God, but imagine that there is. There, there is a creative force and source in the universe, and we've given it this name of God, and, and we, uh, we, we, we we're trying to figure out what, what it is that, you know, why would God create us? What are we here for? And that is a big question. I'm not going to really try and answer why God created us or what we're here for per, perhaps today, but what I am going to put out there for you to consider is that if there is a God and God created us, that the purpose of that creation is for the creation to experience life maximally. Why would God create us to experience life in anything less than maximally? Why would God put us here to suffer? Why would God put us here and then leave us to be by ourselves to perish without even a thought in the cosmic mind? See, I don't believe that to be so. I believe that that there is but one mind, we call that God, and we are all some part of that mind. And therefore, as we continue to grow in ourselves, we grow in our consciousness, we grow in our spirituality, we are in fact really growing in the mind of God. We are growing in our ability to understand, to, to interact with, and to experience God as us in our creative uh, expression of life. We often say in New Thought that God works for us by working through us, and that means that as we know and we grow within ourselves, that God knows and, and grows within us because the, the life force, that, that spark that gives us the life experience that we have comes from God, and it never ceases to, to uh, be apart from us as long as we're living in this expression. I believe that when we move on from this life into our next experience, that that life force that life spark that life experience goes with us as we make our what we call our transition so the mind of man is some part of the mind of god we have this idea that i was sharing in the first segment 
about something called self-discipline. Self-discipline is doing what needs to be done when we'd rather be doing something else. Willing to take a short-term pain for a long-term gain in our life experience. And we can do this. Can you imagine, just for example, can you imagine that just possibly God and success are not two opposite ends of our life experience? Because there are so many people that they, they teach God and they teach success is a bad thing. Can you consider God and success, God supporting success, God providing us with everything that we need in our lives for the success that we can have and experience, but we have to discover it for ourselves. That is the journey, the process of our life experience. Thoreau said that, I know of no more encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability of man to elevate his life by conscious endeavor. That is our taking the gifts that we were given in our life expression, in our life experience, and putting them into action in our day-to-day -day lives. What a wonderful concept that is, that my life experience can grow and can continue to grow. Um, scientists look at life and they, they say that life is doing one of two things at all points in time. It's either growing, expanding, or it's contracting and it's dying. There is no point in life where it stays the same. It, it, it doesn't grow, it doesn't die, it just exists. And yet, we accept for that not growing and that not dying, that just existing in our life when we accept the concept of living an average life. And it's not that every individual is, is destined to be a super athlete or a super uh, wealthy person in the business world, but every individual is destined to be an incredible success within their own life experience. And that is the gift that is available to each and every one of us, but we have to wake up to that fact. We have to know it, because until we know it, we, we tend to just go through life living, and we tend to live this average ex experience of life because we're taught to live the average experience of life. And it's, it's through no ill will of our parents that they wanted us to be average. You know, get through school, get married, settle down, get a job, live your life, retire, and then, you know, then you die and you move on. Well, that's fine, I guess. But what happens in the in-between? Um, being bored, unfortunately, is a great part of many people's lives. And being bored is not in the growth process, which means if it's not in the growth process, it is in the diminution process, it is in the contraction process, it is in the process that we call dying. And, and that is what happens. You know, there are people that experience a mental death long before they experience a physical death in their life. And this is the tragedy of not living a life fully expressed and fully experienced. That we get to our, our senior days, we get to our, that, that dusk period of our lives, and all of a sudden, there's just nothing there. You know, we watch a little TV, we do a crossword puzzle, uh, we sit around and we wait for our time to expire. Life is so much better than that and offers so much more. And the thing is, you say, well, gee, Rev Steve, you know, I'm whatever, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. I'm 63 years old. Gra Grandma Moses was 75 years old when she decided that she was going to paint in oils. There are people, there's innumerable stories of people that are in their, their 50s, 60s, 70s, and some even in their 80s that start a whole new uh, career in their lives, and some of them become incredibly successful uh, going on into their, their 80s, 90s, and, and people, nowadays people are living to be 100 years old. Who wants to live to be 100 years old and to be bored for the last 40 years of your life? I would hazard a guess that there's probably not anybody out there watching this show today that wants to spend their time from retirement age, let's say 65, till 95, 100, 105, whatever, and just be bored. 
You know, it's at that time of life that many of us now are picking up second or third even careers in their life and they're finding fulfillment, they're finding action, they're finding success. And why are they doing that? Because they're growing their consciousness, they're growing their interest in the life experience itself. Because that's what we were created to do. The divine force that we call God created us to live our life and experience our life in this incredible abundance that has been created for us. But it's only created for us to the extent that we're willing to open our arms, our minds, and our hearts and participate. Life is not, life is not a um, sport for, for uh, sitting on the sidelines. Life is a participatory activity that the more we get involved, the more feedback that life gives to us, the more feedback that life gives to us, the more that we experience life at a greater level, the more we experience it life at a greater level, the more energy we have to experience a greater life, and this begins to build and grow and build and grow. And what am I talking about? That which we grow is is expansive and it is more life versus that which is contractive and tends to take us in a different direction. So in new thought, in religious science, when we, when we express our understanding of this divine creative force that we call God, we're talking about the very life experience itself. We're talking about the love expression that exists within each and every one of us that is available to you and to me and to all our friends and family, to everybody out there. And all we have to do is begin to actively pursue it and we actively begin to pursue it in our minds and then in our hearts and then we begin to to decide and we make that choice we make that decision that I am not going to be average I am not going to accept average in my life I'm going to experience above average I'm going to experience good I'm going to experience life at its fullest I mean we have people I live up in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas, and we have people in their 70s that are just now experiencing a, a, a life in nature, and they're getting out and they're hiking, and they're, they're, they're unfolding their consciousness and opening up to this great, incredible abundance of natural beauty that, that's here in the Central Valley area of California, but it can be found anywhere. You know, whether you live at the sea and you can experience it there on the coast or whether you live in the desert, incredible things happen and grow and expand in the desert. Or whether you live in the mountains, it makes no difference. It only makes a difference when you open your mind and you open your eyes to the good that's there. And that's, that's, that's what it's all about. And we do that, not unconsciously, but we do that by making a decision. We make the choice. And once we make the choice and the decision, it's like Goethe told us in the opening quote, things begin to move, forces begin to happen, things begin to show up in your life. And that is the divine process unfolding for each and every one of us. And that is available to each and every one of us at the level and the extent that we are willing to open our minds to that possibility. And so on that note, I'll see you when we come back for our next segment. This segment is brought to you by Corrine Hatfield of Platinum Mortgage. If you are thinking of purchasing a new home or refinancing an existing home, call Corrine Hatfield at 917-7111. Watch Tim Teeson live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. right here on CentralValleyTalk.com and on digital channel 33.2. If you missed the live broadcast, we're on every Wednesday night at 11 p.m on Comcast Channel 200 and Digital Channel 43.5. You don't want to miss this. Hey, Central Valley, this is Chuck Leonard. Starting in September, I'll be on KAIL, my 7.1. Let's go out in the Tower District and see what people think. Chuck Leonard, I saw that guy in the tour bus with Eddie Money. Chuck Leonard, that guy's been building himself up for years. Chuck Leonard, hey, why are you going to hassle me, man? Central Valley Buzz with Chuck Leonard, starting September 16th on KAIL My 7.1. That man's alley, hungry howies, and scoops ice cream. 
Tower health boots on the steakhouse, Mike Briggs properties. There's Tower Market, Farmer's Market too. Kukas and Landmark, Mr. Sushi for you. Chicken pie shop, Bolton Foley, Palomino's. Spinner's Records, Tower Bike Shop, Irene's to go. Bobby Sal's Restaurant, The Perfect Blend and Million Elephant. H&R Block, Starbucks Coffee, Piemontese. Roger Rocca's Dinner Theater, The Second Space. Tower Tattoos, La Tienda. Me and Ed's is the place. International Furniture, The Review Cafe. Teasers World Tea Market, Long Oak knows the way. Typhoon Restaurant, The Game Preserve, and B of A. Sequoia Brewing, Russo Restaurant, Tower Clocks Today. Come to the tower, there's so much fun for everyone. Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Central Valley Talk.com. Well, welcome back to our third segment today. I am the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in beautiful downtown Madeira. We're across the street from the post office. Join us on Sunday if you have time. Love to have you there. Anyway, we were talking about this power of decision and, and uh, choosing not to live life on an average basis. Understanding that there is a divine presence in the universe that is available to us because it worked for us by working through us. Now, I want you to consider something that most of us, well, actually all of us, um, what we think about ourselves is usually not the truth. Most of us, what we think of ourselves, what we think about ourselves, what our self-evaluation is, is something that's based on our programming that we, exp we experienced growing up, uh, various life uh, actions and, and, and incidences where someone said one thing or another, and, and whatever that one thing or another is gets filed away in our mind, and we have accepted that as the truth of who we are. So when we're looking at our life, you're saying, Rev, Steve, you know, you're telling me that I don't have to live an average life, that I can, I can experience and express life at a, an incredibly high rate of abundance and success and all this wonderful stuff. Well, you know, I'm just an average person. That's the truth about who I am, and that's a lie. And that's a lie that we perpetuate by telling ourselves over and over again that I'm just an average person that I am whatever. You know, years ago, they used to have one test that they give, that they would give to determine what someone, you know, the IQ test, the intelligent quotient test, whatever they call it. And if you scored above a certain level that you were extremely intelligent, and if you were at another level, you were very intelligent, and another level, you were intelligent, and another level, maybe you were average intelligence, and then you were below average. And, you know, we all gave a big sigh of relief if we made that average point, and the, there was a few that, you know, they puffed their chests out because they were above average, and then we have the, the you know, one or two very exceptional organizations for people that, you know, scored very high on that test. They don't do that test anymore. The reason why they don't do that test anymore is because they found out that there are different skills and abilities that each of us have. And that's, that's the gift of our creator, the gift of good. Some of us are geniuses when it comes to art. Some of us are geniuses when it comes to literature, but we have no clue when it comes to things of a, uh, uh, of a physical nature that like sports or whatever. Some of us are geniuses in sports. Take, a Mike, take Michael Jordan, for example. He is an incredible genius in the sport world. He's been incredibly, he's realized it and he became incredibly successful. You know, if you'd put him in a uh, science laboratory, he probably wouldn't have done so well. He probably wouldn't have experienced the successes that he had. But he found where his genius was and he pursued it. 
You know, you look at great writers, they find where their genius is and they pursue it. Mathematicians, they find where their geniuses are and they pursue it. Uh, great photographers. I have, I have a close personal friend who in a later part of his life has now begun to realize that he has an incredible eye and a, and a mental ability to conceptualize and he is creating these beautiful photographs that, that he's now selling and has become his profession. He was a contractor. That's how he got, you know, when I first met him, he was, he was doing contractor work. Now he's a professional photographer. He lives on the coast. It's a wonderful, wonderful transition for him. That is what we have to realize for ourselves, that we're not whatever tag, whatever label that somebody's put on us. We're not a woman or a man or old or young. We are an individualized expression of a divine spirit that we call God that is here to live this life in an incredibly abundant way. All we have to do is figure out, and that's not that hard to do, but you do have to do it, figure out what, what it is that we're willing to accept in our lives. And if we're willing to accept mediocrity and averageness, then that's what the universe is going to provide for us. But if we decide, if we make that decision that I'm going to accept a little short-term pain for a long-term gain, I'm going to do the work that's necessary to determine what it is that my, where my interests lie. And, and in today's world, particularly with the internet, there's all sorts of ways and places that we can go that, that will help us in, in, in our pursuit of that quest. You know, the public library is still available for many people today. There are just sitting and meditating is a, an incredible, incredibly powerful tool in, in developing an understanding of who we truly are. But all these things that I described, and, and the list is substantially longer than that, all these things require one particular thing in order to work, and that is our participation. We have to choose. We have to decide that I am no longer going to accept, but I choose, I make the decision for something above and beyond. So when we're faced with a decision, like the young man I spoke about when I first opened this show, we're looking at, he's looking at a, a short-term gain, potential long-term pain, and he's, he's basing that against his acceptance of just being where he's at. And you understand how the attraction for this short-term gain can be so strong because accepting just where he's at, accepting the average, is a dead-end street. There's no growth there. So we have a talk. We talk about experiencing in life these things. We talk about a God that will provide when we open ourselves up to God providing for us. And, and we talk about doing the personal work, the individual work, the study, the spiritual work, the prayer work, the meditation work, the affirmation work, doing the work that each and every one of us can do. And as we do that, we can see and, and we see it unfold in our lives. And, and I want to share something with you because I see this happen sometimes as people begin on this journey and they, they get excited and they're, they're, oh, this is wonderful. I'm going to do this incredible thing. And they do the work. They do the work. It's kind of like weight loss. You know, you, you see people, they work on weight loss. They work on it. They work on it. They work on it. And they say, oh, I hit this plateau. I hit a plateau. I'm stuck. I hit a plateau and I'm discouraged. I hit a plateau and I fell off my diet. What they don't realize is, as they hit this plateau, if they continue to work on it, one of the things that's happening is the body is still downsizing. Maybe you haven't lost the weight, but the dress size or the waist size or the pant size, the chest size, the belly size has gone down some. But we don't realize the gains we've made if we look out towards the future. Because the horizon is always going to move just a little bit further beyond where we're at. What we have to do is we have to stop and evaluate where we're at and we turn around and we look back to the past. And I've got the Tuolumne Meadows behind me today so it's a wonderful place to look. But when you look back at the past, where you came from, what you left behind, then you can begin to see the distance that you've traveled. And, and that is where you begin to see the growth 
that you have made. Growth, for most all of us, doesn't come in a painless sort of way. Growth requires work. It requires confrontation. It, re it requires consistency. It requires self-discipline. It requires a commitment. One of the things that I talk to people about, and, it, and the wonderful thing about New Thought is, it doesn't really make, and we don't care, what particular dogma you come from, what your theological background is. Matter of fact, we don't even tell you that you've got to give up your personal beliefs. Because what we teach are tools, and the tools are available to anybody. These are tools that take this wonderful tool that we call our brain, and they hone it, they, they refine it, and they allow it to work for us in, in such a, a much more abundant, incredible, and, and dynamic way. The thing is, you don't have to give up your beliefs. You just you put these tools into practice. So we invite all to take the tools, to take meditation. There's, last time I checked, I don't think there was any uh, Buddhist-only tag on meditation or Hindu-only tag or Catholic-only tag on prayer or New Thought-only tag on affirmations. You see, these are all different things that we can all use. And, and when you begin to realize that, you begin to understand that God is available to all of us. Now, however you want to define God, there are some people that they like to see God sitting up in a big gold throne somewhere with a big, you know, white fluffy beard and a big gold G on his chest, and that's fine. You know, I don't see God as a he, and I don't see God as, as an individual. I see God in everything and everywhere. And I... I believe that on some level, within each and every one of us, there is an understanding of the Creator being in all of its creation. And there's nowhere. You know, it, whether you want to go to the Bible or the Quran or, or to the, 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 the ancient Vedas or, or whatever resource you want to go, there's no, there's no resource that says that God didn't create. God is the Creator. And there's no resource that says, well, God created this part, but something else created this part. In the beginning, there was God and God only. And that is the creative moment. That is the creative good. And that is our understanding. So we, we recognize God is in everywhere, in everything. We recognize that we are some part of God. We recognize that God works for us by working through us. And we recognize that we can change our thinking and by changing our thinking, we can change our lives, that we can begin to do that which we really have a desire to do. And when we make that decision to make change in our lives, as Emerson said, the universe begins to move to see to it that it comes to completion. I don't have the quote exact, and I don't need to. We just need to know the value of the thought. And the thought is, once we put our minds to the task and we commit to it with self-discipline, we commit to it with, with our tools, that we can see this come to fruition. And what I tell people oftentimes that come to me is that we, we work on our prayer, we work on believing, and we work on our studying. We work on our meditation, we work on building our faith. And then we, we commit to challenge ourselves for change for a completeness in our lives. And when we do that, there is a force and a source in the universe that responds and provides for us. So we're off to our next break. I'll see you when we come back for our final segment. That man's alley, hungry howies, and scoops ice cream. Tower Health Food, Samba Steakhouse, Mike Briggs Properties. There's Tower Market, Farmer's Market too. Kukas and Landmark, Mr. Sushi for you. Chicken Pie Shop, Fulton's Pulley, Palomino's. Spinner's Records, Tower Bike Shop, Irene's to go. Bobby Sells Restaurant, the perfect blend and million elephant 
H and R Block, Starbucks Coffee, Piemontese, Roger Rocca's Dinner Theater, The Second Space, Tower Tattoos, La Tienda, Me and Ed's is the place, International Furniture, The Review Cafe, Teasers World Tea Market, Love Oak Knows the Way, Typhoon Restaurant, The Game Preserve, and B of A, Sequoia Brewing, Russo Restaurant, Tower Clocks Today, Come to the Tower, there's so much fun for everyone, every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? You're watching CentralValleyTalk.com. CentralValleyTalk.com. I am a monster. I will never back down. I am part of a tradition. I got green in my veins! I am ready to go! I'm a monster! This, this is our team. This is our town! This, this is our barn! This is our time. I am relentless. I will never get tired of the goal song. I'm, I'm ready, ready to go. go! I will never quit. I am a monster. I am a monster! I am a monster! Watch Tim Teeson live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. right here on centralvalleytalk.com and on digital channel 33.2. If you missed the live broadcast, we're on every Wednesday night at 11 p.m. on Comcast channel 200 and digital channel 43.5. You don't want to miss this. You're watching centralvalleytalk.com. Centralvalleytalk.com. Well, welcome back to our fourth and final segment. I am the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in beautiful downtown Madeira. This is New Thought Talk, and my gosh, we are at our final segment. And we went a little long in the last segment, so this is going to be short as we take it to the end of the show. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. You don't have that much longer to, to get through the end of this, but it's all good stuff. So I want to read something to you here. It says, we, there is an infinite energy. Think about this for a minute. There is an infinite energy that connects all life at all levels. As we open to it, when we know that, when we know that and we can accept that, we are connected. Everything is connected, that there is a oneness, a unity. There is this wholeness and completeness. Not as attachments, but as some part of it in its entirety. We have chosen a road less traveled. We have begun to believe, as, and as we believe, we will begin to see. You know, the old saying, seeing is believing. The truth is, believing is seeing. Along those lines, it was the Hopi Indian some 19 centuries ago that said, the earth will remember that the feminine energy of the spider woman is the web that unites the universe. And sometime before that, the Buddha Sutras talked about the place where far away in the heavenly abode, the great god Indra, which was the wonderful lived, which was the wonderful net that unites all that is actually a part of reality. Two vastly different spiritual understandings coming to the same conclusion. It's the conclusion that there is only one 
that one is all a unity and a completeness. If this touches you on some level, if, if what I have shared with you today, if you feel that maybe there, there may be more to this and you would like to experience this in your life, if you would like to consider living life at a higher level and not accepting life as an average, then I invite you to join a New Thought Church, a New Thought community for a Sunday celebration to come, to see, to experience. You can take, like I said earlier in the show, you can hold to your, your old beliefs and you can bring them with you. There's nothing that says that as we pray we have to give up our beliefs or as we meditate we have to give up our beliefs or as we commit to creating a better world around us. You see, my personal belief is as we look at the world today and we see that there is so much disruption in the world, that there's stress and distress on so many different levels, that when we awaken to the fact that we are truly one, that there truly is a unity, a universality of humankind throughout the world, and we begin to recognize our oneness throughout the world, that we can come together as a human family through the entire world. And that is a powerful concept, a powerful consciousness. And I believe that it is attainable. I believe that it is something that is available to each and every one of us. So join us some Sunday out in Madeira. You can come. We're on, on D Street across from the post office. Or if you don't live in the Central Valley, you can go to a web page that is on the banner below. It's findacenter.com, all one word, findacenter.com. If you go to that web page, you will find there a map of the world. So it makes no difference what part of the world you're in. You then take your little cursor and you click on the particular country that you live in and it'll open up. And if it's like the United States, you can click on the state and then they will give you a alphabetical, uh, you know, for cities and stuff. You go to the particular area that you're in and you can find the center that is nearest you. And that, when I say find the center, it doesn't make any difference whether it's a unity center or divine science or religious science or Seike Neoi, which is a, a very large new thought uh, Japanese uh, uh, philosophy. Uh, there's many different things. They're all there. They, they are open and they list each and every one. So you can find the one that's nearest you or the several that are nearest you. Show up. Talk to them. Communicate with them. Ask questions. Put them on the line. Take your beliefs and lay them out there. Challenge them and see what they say. See how they respond. See if average is what they are willing to accept for their life experience. If it's not, maybe it's time to make a decision. A decision to show up, to learn. To learn, to grow, to grow, to expand, to expand, to have more and greater life. And as you do that, one of the tools that you can use is another web page that I, I share every week when I do my show here, and that is the newthoughtlibrary.org or newthoughtlibrary.com. It is available to you online. You will find the writings of Emerson, the writings of Fillmore, the writings of Ernest and his brother Fenwick Holmes. You'll find the writings of El Ella Wheeler Wilcox. you find writings of so many different new thought pioneers. And the basis of the philosophy is there. Phineas Quimby is there. He's, he's one of the greats going back into the uh, 1800s. And uh, your questions may be answered there, or that you may find things there that stimulate even greater questions. And you go from there to your local center. So I invite you to come out to the center. Come out to Madeira. See us out there on Sunday. I'll be speaking this Sunday, as I do most every Sunday. Uh, pick a center near you based on what you find on Find a Center. It's there. It's available for you. Remember, life is a choice, always. Choose to be average or choose to live life to its fullest. I believe you were here to, created to live your life to the fullest. Grab life by the horns. Run with it. Go with it. There is a an author that you will find in the New Thought Library. Her name is Ella Wheeler Wilcox. And she wrote a poem that I keep near and dear to my heart. And it goes something like this. I, I may not get it perfect, but I'll get it pretty close. It goes, uh, some ships drive east, some drive west, the selfsame winds that blow. Tis the set of the sails and not the gales that tell us which way that they go. Like the winds of the seas are the ways of fate as we travel along through life. Tis the set of the soul that sets the goal, not the calm or the strife. 
the set of your soul, the choices that you make, the decisions that you choose. It doesn't make any difference what's going on in the world around you. You create the world that you experience. That is your world. That's our world as a result of your choices. Think about it. You don't have to be average. You don't have to be alone. You don't have to live with old dogma. You don't have to accept. You can move beyond and you can grow beyond. And I hope you've enjoyed today. I enjoyed sharing it with you. So as I close out today, I want to share with you my, my closing prayer as I do each and every week. May the light of God surround you. May the love of God enfold you. May the power of God protect you. And the presence of God watch over you. Wherever you are, God is. And all is well. You choose. Make it a great week. And I'll see you when I come back. Central Valley Talk. 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 Talk.